Hello and welcome to Business Insider with Mario Taniguzzi on YYC Business. Joining me today is Tristan Bach, who is Senior Director of the Altus Group. Thanks for joining us today, uh, Tristan. Oh, well, you're more than welcome. All right, super. Let's uh, talk a little bit about a report that uh, you folks uh, put out recently called Wheels of Fortune. Uh, looking at recovery timelines from the, from the COVID pandemic uh, on certain industries uh, as it relates to arts, entertainment, and recreation. The first is uh, the one I ask you about, uh, Tristan, is casinos. Um, you know, what, what, what can we expect uh, in terms of recovery for the casino industry uh, as we move forward? Well, Mario, I think I should probably just preface this as to, to what we did and why we did it. And then I'll get into that so that you have an understanding of the sure. whole process. So a team of about seven of us uh, across the country uh, were charged with looking at various uh, property types in the arts and entertainment group uh, and how they were being affected by COVID. Were they being you know, disproportionately affected? And if so, what did we feel the uh, timelines would be for them to get back to, and in our recovery mode, we mean uh, back to sort of pre-pandemic business levels and profit levels. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, with respect, and the reason we did that was because uh, our clients obviously are, are interested in, in property tax being one of the main uh, expense items that they no. deal with. And with most uh, jurisdictions in Canada being based on an ad valorem tax system or at value, uh, any drop in value could impact, uh, obviously, or should impact their property taxes. Uh, in reality, that's not happening. That's a whole other story. Unfortunately, many property values are locked in a specific time and date, yeah. and uh, they're not uh, being captured currently as to what's happening. But uh, at any rate, I can expand on that a little later. Uh, with respect to the casino market, so what we did uh, on an overall basis is uh, we looked at um, public financial records. We looked at uh, Statistics Canada data. We had discussions with industry uh, participants and, and clients, as well as uh, looked to industry association publications and that type of thing. To, to kind of aggregate what we thought would be the timelines for recovery. Uh, this was done as a snapshot in time. And uh, so this was still in second wave as opposed to, you know, now we have the third. So we yeah. would probably be relooking at this again. But uh, what we found with casinos is there's an expectation that it's going to be about a two to three year time frame for things to get back to quote normal in terms of operating revenues and, and that type of thing uh, basically uh you know they've been shuttered for most of the most of all of last year and now again in, in certain parts of the country are shuttered so uh they feel it's going to be a, a a tough road back uh two to three years down the road and there's a there's a bit of a concern that you know maybe there's going to be some you know hangover or lag of people wanting to, uh, you know, gather in groups and, and play tight with each other on surfaces yeah. that everybody's sharing and all that. So there, that is the concern, especially with the age demographic of the typical casino uh, participant who tends to be in the, you know, upper fifties and above. Yeah. What about uh, theme parks? Well, theme parks, uh, sh we we anticipated about a one year lag. Um, and just to put it into context, uh, that would have been this year, so this summer, for, yeah. uh, for, for parks like Wonderland to reopen. Um, it looks like they were planning to reopen, and it looks like we're a little off on that one, but then again, the third wave came along. And yeah. uh, basically, the reality there is they will open a lot sooner because even though they're you know large gatherings of people, it's predominantly outdoors, so they're not going to be... Uh, faced with the, uh, the issues that the uh, other venues in the arts and entertainment sector are. Yeah, okay then. Now, um, one of the things uh, that's quite interesting is, is golf courses. Uh, if you could talk a little bit about that. Uh, 
obviously a lot of people want to be outdoors uh, you know, the, because of the pandemic, et cetera. And, and there is an encouragement to be outdoors. Uh, what's the impact going to be on golf courses? Well, they actually fared fairly well through the first uh, couple of waves. Uh, they were allowed to open and uh, well, I should say they were allowed to open for golf, uh, not so much uh, their food and beverage side. So you yeah. know, while you could still get some food and beverage, there was no, you know, hitting the 19th hole after a round and, and buying a dinner or whatever. So that obviously was a, an impact, though not as severe as some of the other sectors had. Um, we would have anticipated that they would have been running full steam this year. And then, of course, third wave came along. So yeah. uh, it, it's going to be probably a marginal impact this year on golf courses, but not to the same extent as the other categories in this, uh, this paper. Okay. I'm going to lop in um, uh, uh, the, the live theater and movie theaters and obviously concert venues, right? Uh, you, you know, uh, what are your thoughts on, on in that kind of area, that kind of entertainment area? You know, we, we didn't actually come up with a specified time frame for those venues. And it was basically due to the fact that they are going to be um, the hardest hit in terms of, uh, you know, having it's all inside, it's all mass people. Uh, and it's dependent so much right now, I guess, uh, on the vaccine rollouts and how they go. Yeah. Um, we understand that there are some concerts being slated actually in Toronto. I've heard of one being set up for the uh, fall of this year. It's a Genesis concert. So I don't know how that's going to work. Uh, I find it interesting, but uh, yeah. uh, in terms of the smaller venues, I mean, they'd love to get back at it. New York, for example, is now saying that they're going to open Broadway in the fall. Oh, okay. It's in the Broadway theater. So yeah. Uh, I would anticipate based on that, we're looking still probably another six months to a year out for these uh, facilities. Okay. And, and movie theaters are going to be interesting because, uh, you know, we've had, you know, with the pandemic, there's been, you know, a whole change in behaviors and everybody's streaming everything now. So yeah. it's going to be interesting to see, you know, never mind the fact that people may be a little, uh, dicey about going to large crowds and you know until there's a full vaccination program yeah. in place um but have they changed their whole mindset and you know i can get that movie and rent it at home or do they still want to have that experience so yeah. that's going to be interesting to see and speaking of which uh you know uh, brings me to my last kind of group uh which is the fitness clubs and gyms uh you know the same thing right a lot of uh exactly a lot of uh people are experiencing fitness now in a different way by themselves virtually you know uh what do you uh what are your thoughts on that that sector yes we 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 didn't tag a specific timeline because we think that's another one that's going to be fairly significantly altered through this pandemic and like you were saying you know there's been a change again there with people have adapted and how much of that adaptation is going to stick you know people peloton went crazy people were buying peloton like crazy right so and many of the uh, people that were able to go back when these did open in various sectors, they found that a lot, you know, they, a lot of people did not. So it'll be interesting to see if uh, the same number of these fitness centers uh, are able to hang on and, and recapture their membership. Yeah, it's, it's, it's funny, right? Because uh, <laughs> I was just uh, thinking that I can't go buy an evening uh, uh, of watching TV without seeing a Peloton commercial. So. <laughs> absolutely true yeah yeah they're absolutely obviously true. doing quite well um tristan is there anything you uh, else you wanted to mention about the report that uh, i didn't ask you um well i just think it should be uh taken into the context that you know this is one of many reports that altus is putting together for various property types and again it goes back to the whole uh you know, assessments and taxes, which we deal with, uh, are based on, you know, the values of properties and those values are set in time. And 
one of the things the pandemic has shown us is that you know certain categories of uh, real estate have been impacted severely, yeah. negatively. Others have actually fared pretty well. Um, you know, the industrial distribution centers are are doing just fine. You know, those yeah. those types of and some of the manufacturing. So we don't see you know the same kind of hit or any hit on a lot of property types. So what's happening is the properties whose values have gone down, that's not being reflected. So they're paying higher taxes than what their value would support. And therefore, they're being equitably treated. And, and the problem is, is we don't have current reassessments in many jurisdictions. There are a few, yeah. uh, Alberta, um, BC, uh, out in the east, uh, they do annual reassessments. They've captured some of the COVID impact for affected properties like entertainment properties, retail properties. Um, but in places like Ontario, for example, uh, there was supposed to be a reassessment this year. It was canceled. We're still on a 2016 valuation date. Well, we're seven years basically by the time this cycle's over away from that valuation date. And, you know, all kinds of things have shifted obviously. And, yeah. So it's just this huge inequity because these properties that are getting severely impacted and their values would drop because of that aren't seeing their assessments drop and their taxes drop and where the ones that are doing fairly well they're you know they're not seeing the change the other way yeah for sure all right well thanks very much uh, tristan for joining us today well pleasure to be here and uh anytime all right, super. That was Tristan Bach, who is Senior Director of the Altus Group. This has been Business Insider with Mario Tanaguzzi on YYC Business. Thanks for joining us today.